All right, welcome back. Welcome into the BFR podcast presented by Sports Mockery. My name's Dave. I'm joined by my co-host, Ficky. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Dave underscore BFR. Uh, you can also check out all my writings on uh, sportsmockery.com. Again, this is Ficky. You can follow him on Twitter. It's Ficky Baby. Uh, we have a great show. First pregame, Bears versus Packers. Uh, we have an awesome guest, Zach, who covers the Packers for CBS Sports. He's going to be joining us very, very soon. Uh, before we hop into it, Ficky Man, how you doing? Man, so good. Football is literally, what, two days away? Like, we've been, the moment is almost here. We've been waiting so long. I'm just excited. Like, I, I can't believe we finally reached the point, so. You and I both, man. Well, like I said, <laughs> we have Zach here in a moment. It looks like he actually just joined in. Uh, Ficky, do you want to go ahead and bring him in, man? Yep. Gotcha, gotcha. All right. What's All up, right, guys? Zach. What's up, man? How's it going? Oh, you know, I think there's a big game this week. Something like oh, that. Oh, I don't know. really? <laughs> I didn't know yeah, that. Wow. Like that. <laughs> I anyway, thought we were just so, thought we were just coming here to shoot the shit. I didn't know we were going to talk about a game. Right. <laughs> Next. Thank God. So we have uh, for those who don't yeah. know, um, Zach Jacobson saying that last name right, Zach yes. Jacobson. Okay, <laughs> good. I, it looks simple, but I just want to make sure you never know. Uh, he covers the Packers for CBS Sports. Uh, he's going to kind of help us break it, break it down. Um, just the Bears versus Packers this week. It's a little different. Aaron Rodgers is not here. Uh, Zach. Thank Before God. we hop into it, man, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into just covering Green Bay? Wow. Shoot. Well, <laughs> uh, when I was four years old, I started uh, – I got this book. My mom was a friend was a friend with a beat writer in the 90s when, you know, when the Packers had those Super Bowl teams. Uh, he co-wrote a book. I got my hands on it when I was four years old. And for some reason – and, you know, when you're a little kid, you're drawn visually to things. You know, I'm not sitting there like little Einstein reading, you know, the pages and everything, reading every word. But, you know, something drew me to their sleeves. I don't know if you remember in the 90s, the Packers had like those, a lot of stripes on their sleeves. Mm-hmm. Okay, fine. And as a kid, I'm just like, well, wow, that's, that's freaking awesome. And then uh, it kind of grew from there. I started watching the games growing up. I actually started reading the book and i ended up falling in love with the team i started covering them in 2016 and now here i am with you guys hey man i love it i mean that's a <laughs> honestly it's kind of i think how every sports fan kind of grows up you just kind of cling to a team we i mean i grew up you know near the team chicago area so obviously kind of just in the blood um but man it's a it's a really interesting time just for both teams obviously jordan love um there's i think there's potential we don't really know uh, and you can say the same for justin fields obviously a little bit more proven in some areas um, but it's a crazy, it's a different matchup for, you know, in regards to just, you know, Rogers finally being gone. So for me, I want to kind of hop into it. We'll talk about the quarterbacks first. That's what everyone is obviously going to be looking forward to the most. Um, first of all, I want to know what your thoughts are on Justin Fields, like bias aside. I know we all have fun on Twitter, but what do you think of Justin Fields? What does anything scare you? And also obviously, um, besides like his passing, um, what, what do you think the, the Packers can kind of take advantage come come Sunday? Well, I want to get this out of the way right now. I love Justin Fields. I loved him coming out of college. I, you know, him getting drafted the Bears that did not change my perception of him at all. Obviously, there was a little bit of a concern considering you know Matt Nagy was there and everything, but uh, you know he is such a fun player to watch. And this misconception i'm talking about twitter specifically there's this misconception with how i feel about justin fields and how they you know bears fans think i feel about justin fields i i love the guy and i i love watching him play football obviously he's a pain in the ass to have to play against on the field but there's so much room for growth there and that's the scary part about him is not just not just his you know his threat as a runner but the fact that he's nowhere near his ceiling obviously he can improve as a passer of course uh, and I feel like everyone talks about that a lot. You know, no one says that he can't throw. It's just that he can't make this make certain throws consistently that you want to see. But he's going into year three. He has weapons around him now. And this is about when you would expect him to take that jump, you know, as a passer. So, you know, he he's such a fun player to watch. And I, 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 I like I said, I loved him coming out of college. But where the Packers can take advantage of him, you have to neutralize. And again, take this with a grain of salt. You need to try to neutralize him as a runner and there is only so much you can do to an extent to neutralize Justin Fields as a runner because he's he's electric and he's slippery back there so if you neutralize that threat and just kind of you know keep him in the pocket keep him contained don't allow him to break free don't allow him to get outside the pocket because that's when he's most electric that's when he's the most dangerous so if you can remove that threat and you know make him exclusively just a passer within the pocket obviously we don't know necessarily 
how he'd be able to handle something like that yet, be, you know, with new weapons around him. Uh, so you keep him in the pocket, then you have a good chance of winning the game. But if he, if you let him run wild, you know, if he is going to make your defense look silly, and obviously we've seen Joe Barry's defense look silly on a numerous, a number of occasions, uh, then you know that's where the Packers can kind of take advantage and hopefully turn the tides of the game. Okay. Think you want to add to anything with that? Any well, I actually had a, I, uh, yeah, I had a question about your defense in general. Because on paper, it seems like, you know, they're pretty good. But I know there's been a lot of complaints from Bears. I'm not Bears fans, sorry. From Packers <laughs> fans about Joe Barry coming back, right? So do you feel that they will take the step or play at the expectation that they should? Because I feel like they've kind of underperformed. No, okay. Quick enough. <laughs> Just no, no, no I, faith yeah. in Barry at all. As of right now, no. Like he has not done enough to, to make you say, okay, I have faith that they can turn this around. I have faith that they can make the most of the talent because on paper, on paper, this defense looks great. They've invested so many first round picks on that side of the ball. They just spent, you know, the number 13 overall pick on Lucas Van Ness. You expect them to be remarkable, just a, a very respectable unit. And granted down the last, you know, four or five games of last season, they did manage to turn it around. They looked very good. And that was because, Jair Alexander started having more of a voice in their defensive approach. Rasul Douglas started having more of a voice. They became more of a a player led defense as opposed to you know Joe Barry leading the charge, calling the shots. So if they can translate that into this season and kind of carry that over, of course, that is a very very tall task because you know year to year in the NFL, it's it's you know things don't normally carry over. It's a completely new right. ball game every single year. So uh, if they can somehow be that unit that they were done the last, you know, quarter of last season, then yeah, they could possibly, you know, be top five, top 10 in the league this season. But as of right now, no, Joe Barry has not done enough, at least to me, you know, for me personally, he's not done enough mm -hmm. to make me want to say, you know, yeah, I have all the faith in this world in, in this defense, but no, we're not there yet. And speaking of defense, I think I just saw that Eric Stokes is going to be out. How big of a loss is that? Because yeah. obviously CB2, you still have Jair, so like you've got a dog back there. <laughs> but how, like, who who fills in the role for Eric Stokes there? And do you have confidence that you know he'll be able to guard the uh, Bears' offense? Yeah. So Eric Stokes began the season on the PUP list, so he's going to be out for a minimum of four games. I think if he was to be in the lineup, it would be uh, Jair Alexander, Eric Stokes on each boundary and Russell Douglas would be their, their primary nickelback, which is what they rolled with for the first half of last season before Stokes injury uh, in, in Detroit right now, they're more than likely going to line up with, you know, a group of Jair Rasul on the outside, those two guys. And I think they're going to have Keyshawn Nixon as their nickelback. Mm -hmm. um, they really, they only had four corners on their 53 man roster, which was something I predicted just, it was, it was, I think they have teams across the league. They have more luxury uh, as of the last couple of years with the CBA and then, you know, the expanded kind of game day elevation rule. You know, if they really absolutely need to, they can easily bring a guy up from, you know, from the practice squad to elevate them for game day. They can promote somebody during the season. Whatever they need to do, they have options. And I think that's a luxury that a lot of teams across the league have. And it allowed the Packers to go a little lighter uh, at cornerback. So, and what was the second part of your question? No, I think that was it. But four, that seems that seems pretty low. Like I'm, it's five. It's I mean, yeah, because I'm like one person. <laughs> I mean, corners don't get injured as frequently as like you know linebackers and people in the mm -hmm. trenches and things like that. But I mean, one person down, you're kind of shit out of luck, especially if it's like Jair or something. That's gonna be. I mean, obviously they'll fill someone in, like you said, from the practice squad and things like that. But four seems pretty light. And it kind of gets a little more bleak when you realize that fourth corner is a seventh round rookie Ooh. who uh, Carrington Valentine, who granted he looked remarkable this, this summer. Like he had great, great, great training camp, great preseason. He had an interception in the opener against the Bengals. So he he's looked very, very good kind of shades of Sam Shields a little bit, uh, mm -hmm. which is ironic because they both were 37, but uh, I think they're also kind of falling back on the fact that, Darnell Savage can also come down and play play the nickel, yep. which is something he did last year as well. So, you know, and they're pretty heavy at safety. They have six safeties right now. So, um, you know, they have they have a little bit of flexibility back there. So it doesn't make that 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 number four look as bad, but it's still it's pretty light compared to you know what you would expect. 
when speaking of you know safeties, ex Bear Amos is gone. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, do you do you think that was the right move? I understand it from the lens of like, okay, they're going through this whole youth movement thing. They want to get younger. I get it, but you're. You're not just losing someone who, you know, played over a thousand snaps for you as a safety last season and the year before that and the year before that and the year before that. You know, you're you're losing someone who was such a leader in that locker room. And with such a young safety room, I feel like having someone like that would have been kind of imperative just to just to to the development of some of these guys. They drafted a, a, a Anthony Johnson Jr. from Iowa State in the seventh round. Uh, they brought back Dolan Levitt. They have Rudy Ford starting opposite Darnell Savage. So it's it's a young room. Uh, and I think having Adrian Ames there would, would have been very smart. If they were going to bring back any one of their vet- veterans, I think Mercedes Lewis, uh, a bear now, yep. Mercedes <laughs> Lewis and Adrian Amos would have been like the two kind of yeah. candidates for me. I'm okay with letting Alan Lazard walk, letting Robert Tunyon walk, letting you know Randall Cobb walk. Oh, but Mercedes Lewis and Adrian Amos, like the presence that those two guys provided just on the field and off of it was, I think, invaluable. And not only that, not only is it a loss in Amos, but also he's a bear killer. Like I swear, every time he plays the Bears, he gets at least one pick. It happens. So, <laughs> so I'm gonna be glad to not see our ex bear back there for once. So, <laughs> it, so uh, spe- speaking of like defense, the Bears' defense is. I mean, if you if you talk to someone in Chicago, you're optimistic. We're optimistic. Obviously, there's gonna be some growing pains with some of the rookies, Tyreek Stevenson in, in particular. What do you, what it, from a from a green boy like what in Wisconsin? What is the general like? Do you guys fear this defense at all? Or are you kind of excited that Jordan Love starting it off against the Bears in this defense? What, what are your guys' thoughts on just our secondary and the, and the young unit? I'm not personally, and this isn't bias aside. You guys know yeah. by now. I'm not I'm not like that. I'm not a big fan of what they're doing up front. I like I the, yeah. you know uh you know, like the Guacay mm-hmm. signing that was you know that was a good pickup. Uh, but really, outside of that, I, I can't find anything to really write home about as far as the front seven goes. But the secondary, I feel like there's a lot of potential there between Kyler Gordon, Jaquan uh, Brisker, uh, Eddie Jackson. Like there's a lot, there's a lot of fun pieces there that I think could materialize into something really good this season. It could surprise a lot of people. So, you know, that secondary is definitely something that could potentially keep Jordan Love on his toes. You know, mm-hmm. there's like I said, there's a lot of potential there. Yeah, my concern though is like. I mean, you think of like, I still think Jordan Love as a young quarterback, right? Like you want to get pressure in his face, make Mm -hmm. him have to really think, make the right decisions. I'm like, who, I don't know if we really, I mean, we all agree. Our defensive line, it's an upgrade from last year, but it's like, how much is an upgrade from, you know, hot dog water? You know what I mean? Like it's bottled water now. So, (laughs) you know, it's, it's interesting to see how we're going to attack that. Like, is it going to be a lot of nickel blitzes, you know, setting Jaquan Brisker, things like that. Because I don't know if our if our four, <laughs> bro. I, I, I have, the dog just went crazy. I, I have a cat now. We adopted a cat oh, okay. a month ago, and she's like she's a crackhead. Now she just knocked over my my one source of, of ventilation. I had a fan in here, and now it's just <laughs> gone to shit. So if it makes yeah. you feel any better. My my cat is also a crackhead. So. Fantastic. Oh, yeah, I feel yeah, a lot better just, now. <laughs> man, I, I just close this door. I always make sure this is closed before I start. You know, make sure you're that smart. I'm in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been a while since I've had a cat, so I'm still trying to get like the uh, you know the methods down and everything. Oh, yeah. I don't I think it really is bit. the method to the madness. They <laughs> do whatever the fuck they want. So good luck. You know what I mean? Really, just, yeah. Good luck, as we just witnessed. So, but yeah, it would be interesting to see, like, you know, how we get pressure on love because my biggest concern is, like, if he's sitting back there all day, he's just going to mm-hmm. dot us up, in my opinion. So, what's your thoughts on that? Well, see, that's the thing. That's that's the interesting part of Jordan Love right now. You know, obviously, the fact that he's a young, unproven quarterback, we don't know what the hell he's going to be. But even in the times he's played, we don't know how he's going to respond to the blitz, to being relentlessly pressured. We don't know how he's going to answer to that. His one start in Kansas City, obviously the worst possible environment for a young quarterback to get his first start. <laughs> Horrible. Right. <laughs> Terrible circumstances. Yeah. And, and on a short week when Aaron Rodgers ended up on the COVID list. So short week, Arrowhead Stadium, going against the, the Steve Spagnuolo blitzes nonstop. He did not really answer for that and Matt LaFleur didn't really have much of a plan for that and it it (laughs) resulted in a very rough day for Jordan Love so now two years later have they learned from that has Matt LaFleur uh you know come up with a plan for you know what if this is something Jordan Love has to face again you know how how is that gonna work how is he gonna respond so if the Bears can get pressure then it's a wild card at that point you know that, that could rattle Jordan Love the one thing we've learned from Jordan Love in this limited action is that he's very very resilient 
you know, when things go wrong, like in the preseason, things have gone wrong multiple times on opening positions. His next drive, he responds leading a touchdown drive. So he's very resilient. We just don't know how he's going to answer in the ebb, you know, the ebbs and flows of a game when he's relentlessly blitzed and kind of knocked off of his uh, his, his pedestal a little bit. Yeah, that's and one going thing. Off that, oh, oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, going off that, I was wondering though, in the preseason, did you see? I know in preseason, it's a lot of vanilla, you know, <laughs> schemes or yeah. lack thereof, right? So, did you see a lot of blitzes on him? Because it seemed like he had a a, a great preseason in general but i wonder mm-hmm. how much of like how how many plays did he get where it was blitzes coming in and things like that where he really had to read a defense i can't recall really any specific play where i was like oh wow he's got pressure in his face wow oh wow he's gonna run for his life there was nothing like that he wasn't i don't think he was hit a single time in in the preseason luxury yeah. which yeah. Was, <laughs> insane wow. luxury yeah and that yeah. was without no, David Bakhtiari at left tackle, you know, uh, so they didn't have their preferred offensive line in still wasn't touched. He, he, you know, had all the time in the world in the pocket. I think there was, he, um, faced, I believe it was the fourth lowest pressure rate out of any quarterback this, you know, in, in the preseason. So if that's going to be a trend going into the season, that's going to be a very, very big luxury. The Packers always have a really good offensive line, uh, Typically, now I think I was. I actually went back and watched every snap of Jordan Love in preseason. It was on like the condensed replay, mm-hmm. just to see kind of you know how he was playing because you see the stats and it's like okay, wow, pretty dang good. Yeah, and and even on good. even during the the film and it is preseason, he just he did what he was supposed to do. He made the throws. Obviously, he had a couple misplays that you and some you obviously you see on Twitter. It's like oh, how do you miss him wide open? But then the very next play, you know, he's a, a great slant or just he's. I think he's going to be a lot better than I think most Bears fans are getting him giving him credit for. Um, now, hopefully, he's just not you know Hall of Fame you know quarterback. Yeah, please, ridiculous. We please we talked about that. Back, we don't want another back, one to um, back. Please, when we're looking just I, for one. Yeah, and I was looking at PFF. Bastard. I don't think he was pressured once. Um, I would have to go and look at the stats again. But I'm almost sure, like PFF, it was like zero pressures, and I was like. Obviously, that's amazing, but I'm like, that's the Packers' O line right there, and even they don't even have all their starters, so it's like. It's pretty impressive. So um, now I want to go ahead and expectations for Jordan Love. Uh, I know we kind of touched on Justin Fields, but what what are your like? What is a good season for him? What is successful? Um, you know, campaign to kind of feel confident heading into next season. And is this a must win game for you guys? Before I answer that, can I go pick up my fan because it is goddamn yeah. hot in here? Yeah, absolutely, yeah, please do. Absolutely, please, okay, please one do. second. Get comfortable. <laughs> no, you're good. Actually, it'd be perfect. And this time, uh. We have a super chat that came in, Dave, so I'll share it. Oh, okay. Uh, so this is from Tito that says, our D is just – oh, so our defense is just as good as theirs on paper. Our backers are better and secondary. They have a better D line. Love will look decent because the O-line is good. I feel like that's a fair assessment. Yeah. They definitely have a better D-line. Exactly. I can pro- <laughs> I can promise you that. They have a much better – I don't even know if we really have well, one, to be honest. I but. think there – aren't the, who's – um? you guys have a star. Is it – Um. he's going to be out, I think – What's his name? How am I slipping this? Um, what, uh, what, what position group? What position, Dave? Um, on the line, Gary Rashawn Gary. Oh, oh right. Is he out? He's probably he's more than likely gonna play because he's been oh, doing he te- he's been doing like team drills. So I, I can't take a break. Oh, he's blind. <laughs> he will he will be on a pitch count. I can tell you that much. Okay. Oh, pitch count. That's what I think. Hurt. Okay, that's better than yeah. nothing. I'll take a pitch count. No. <laughs> better than going full speed right oh my god absolutely. Yeah, absolutely i'll take that later in the year let us get used to our old line give it you know fields a little bit confidence some you know breathing room uh anyway so the question zach what are your expectations for jordan love and is this a must win game for week one like we feel like it is but what how does it feel in wisconsin how do you feel about it expectations i feel like Look, if Jordan Love plays within the structure of the offense, which is something that Aaron Rodgers kind of strayed from last year, you know, he just appeared really lackadaisical. You know, he didn't really, he was kind of doing his own thing, which maybe it was intentional. Maybe he wanted to play his way off the team. I, I don't know. I, I have no idea, you know, <laughs> but if Jordan Love can play within the structure of the offense and, and excel at what Matt LaFleur is trying to do with his scheme, and lean on that running game, know where his outlets are, know where his checkdowns are. There's no reason why he shouldn't come close to at least 4,000 yards. I would say potentially 20 to 25 touchdowns, kind of maybe flirting with double-digit interceptions. You know, that's the one thing with him. He needs to take care of the football, 
not commit repeat mistakes, which is something I have not seen him do yet. So that's very encouraging. But with the bar Aaron Rodgers set last year, and you know, I've said this before, like on Twitter and stuff like that, and people took it way out of context. They're saying, Oh wow, you think he's just gonna step right <laughs> in and, and 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 you know be a Hall of Fame quarterback and win an MVP? It's not what I'm it's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is Aaron Rodgers set such a low bar last year. He was a very remarkably average quarterback. I like I'll I'll say that much. He wasn't bad, he wasn't great, he was remarkably average, you know, for compared to what we're used to seeing from him. Right. So there's no reason why Jordan Love shouldn't be able to at least come close to that territory where right around where Aaron Rodgers was last year. Um, okay. Now, in the second part of your question. Yeah, is week one, do you consider – so a obviously muscling. it's a new era. Yeah, you know, Aaron Rodgers is gone. For for the Bears fans, for us, you know, watching the team, Bowl. covering the team, it's – yeah, our Super Bowl. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a big one. You know, like we're not going to – for me, it's like I see some people be like, ah, it's just week one. For us, it's a little bit different. It's Jordan Love. You're on the road. You're in, You're at home. And I feel like this is just like you have to take care of business here, you know. Even if it's just squeaking out a win, but you just you can't you can't let the same old thing happen where the Packers come in and and, and take this from you. But how does it feel in Wisconsin? Well, I think people are very supremely confident, which I think you could say yeah. you'd be able to kind of say the same thing going into either city. You know, I think people in Chicago are probably radiating with confidence, very high on Jordan Love, very high on the weapons that, that the, the Bears have finally provided for him. No more throwing to Dante Pettis and Equinemius St. Brown. <laughs> Feels good. Just, <laughs> yeah, that must be rejuvenating. <laughs> yeah, it uh, definitely is. <laughs> you know, and then you go to, to to Green Bay, and they're confident in a new era. You know, they've struck out on two Hall of Fame quarterbacks in a row. Why can't it be a third? You know, and, and they love yeah. these young pass catchers they have, a youth movement. Like, they have their pieces kind of set for the future. It's just a matter of how is that going to be able to materialize over the course of a full season? How are these guys going to going to grow together? How is the chemistry going to be? You know, on the field, off of it, because you can look, you can look like one of the best teams ever on paper, but it's so much different when you're mm-hmm. going through adversity, when you're struggling oh, yeah. during a season. How are they? You know, how is this team going to respond to a Jordan Love led football team when they face adversity, when they don't win games, when they struggle? Are they going to rally around him? Are they going to turn against him? Are they going to eat each other? What's going to happen? You know, so I think it's. I don't want to call it a must-win game because, again, it's just it's the regular season opener. But at the same time, mm-hmm. I feel like this could pave the way for the future trajectory of the rivalry. If the Bears win this, they have all the momentum. They have all the momentum yeah. going going into the matchup later this year, going into the matchups next year. If the Packers lose, then you know that's kind of foreign territory for them as far as losing to the Bears goes. So. You know, it's definitely going to be interesting to see kind of where they go from here, regardless of what the result is. In the grand scheme of things, obviously, it's one game, long season ahead. Yeah. It is, it is, it's a race. You know, it's you don't have yeah. to, you know, haul ass through it. You can jog through it. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's a marathon. So, yeah, as far as like the rivalry goes, it's kind of it's it's huge, significant. Oh yeah, I think I mean the NFL knew what they're doing, right? If if you believe oh, in yeah. the rigged, if you oh. believe in the rigged script, right? Th- <laughs> this is a part of it. Like these storylines of the new, the new, uh, you know, the new eras. Basically, Bears having a quarterback that's like respectable, and <laughs> and then seeing if you know the Packers have another one. So I mean, they know exactly what they're doing with it. And and let me, I have to say, this is a comment you said earlier. All right. If Jordan Love gets to 4,000 yards before Fields can get to it, I might be done. It's, I don't get, I don't, it's not fair, Zach. It really isn't. You know, I'm Especially not even with our weapons. Fields. I'm not even, I'm, I'm at the court, I'm at the, the camp of like, he's getting like 3,500 for Fields, which I think is fair, right? Or something around there, right? Yeah, yeah. Still, if Jordan Love in his first year gets 4,000 with, why receivers that are all 18 and can't drink? I'm done. I can't, <laughs> I, I, I can't, but, I can't do this anymore. But I will say this though, with Jordan Love, like just watch him. He, I think he, he processes a lot faster already in my does than Justin Fields. And it's not a not like Fields is a dynamic. He can't, Love can't run like Fields, but Fields, I don't think he can pass like Jordan Love right now. And, you know, is it a knock? Maybe, but it's Jordan Love's just a little bit. He's just better at it, you know, and every quarterback is going to be different. So, I mean, maybe Fields shocks us and he kind of takes that next level. I haven't really seen it. I hope he does. 
Um, but Jordan Love is interesting, man. That's why I don't really – I haven't really talked a lot of smack on Twitter. I've learned from Trubisky. You know, I'm like, I just can't do it again, you know, until well, we see, you know – One stat. I think you one and stat. me – I think you and me met because we were trash-talking each other. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. That sounds yeah. about right. I think, you yeah, dunked on me. I think you dunked on me multiple times. I'm like, who is this guy? <laughs> like, <laughs> who is this get asshole? out of here. <laughs> yeah. No, man. Yo, there is one stat that does that does bother me. And it's it? in the month of September, Bears versus Packers. What is the overall record? Out of eight games, how many games has the Bears won in the month of September? If you could guess. One. Zach, what's your I'll, guess? I want to say in the month of September. Well, I know they played in September 2012. And mm-hmm. yeah, shoot. Wow. Is it zero? It's zero. It's okay. zero. Not a zilch. Nothing. So. I was trying. To, I was trying to think like did, <laughs> that. That game that um, Aaron Rodgers broke his collarbone. I think that was like October. So I was like, yeah, I was kind of screwing with myself a our, little bit. But our closest, most recent one was 2018, the Mac game. But we right. ended up losing. Won the first half. The rest of them. Yeah, yeah. That's that's good. Won the Hang the half. banner. Hang the banner. Won the first half. But but it's funny. Yeah, like bad. that game. You like that's the opening season. Talking about like you know we opened that season with a loss and then we ended up going 12 and four. I think we closed out the division in Green Bay that year. In 2018. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Or I'm sorry, yeah. it was in Chicago. And so it's like obviously different because you have two young quarterbacks. Just a di- obviously a total different feel. Aaron Rodgers is gone, so can't really go too much into it. Um, let's see here. But Ficky, do you have any other questions for Zach, man? No, I don't. Go ahead. Okay. Go on to the next one. Yeah, I have. Uh, so this one, it obviously, first of all, I didn't even get to this, but DraftKings has the Bears as one point favorites somehow, um, which is nice at Soldier Field. Um, <laughs> it's weird to be favored. Like it, it is one it point, is. but if you were if it was in a neutral field, I think it would probably be close to you know, uh, maybe leaning towards Green Bay. I don't know. Oh, definitely. But definitely. I want to know what is the biggest X factor outside of Jordan Love for the Packers this week. Like who is one guy that can swing this entire thing for? For Green Bay, Christian Watson. Yeah, I think if, me. if yeah, he scares me too, <laughs> he's so knowing, tall and fast. Knowing that the Bears play a lot of cover one and a lot of cover two, and my colleague at Packer Report, yeah. uh, uh Red Dark, yeah, he actually did a you know a very good story on this today. If you guys get the chance to check it out, um, there is an opportunity for him to have a huge day just being able to get behind the defense, stress the safeties, and win deep, that is going to kind of make or break things. But obviously it takes two to tango. Jordan Love needs to make those those throws. He needs to be able to, you know, and that was one thing he struggled with in the preseason. It's kind of, you know, even in training camp, it was getting adjusted to Christian Watson's speed and, you know, not hanging those deep balls in the air for so long. Uh, Because you do that, you give, you you know, defensive backs a chance to catch up on it. Yeah, so he needs to take advantage of those opportunities because they are going to come. There are going to be chances for Christian Watson to get behind the defense. Um, that's someone that could really blow this game wide open. And we saw that against Dallas last year in, it was kind of his coming out party game where, you know, Packers were down by two touchdowns and all of a sudden Christian Watson, bam, out of nowhere, he struggled bang, all season bang, with confidence bang. injuries, you know, and all of a sudden here he is, he's arrived, you know, and in, in the Packers ended up winning that game by our last second field goal for Mason Crosby. So, you know, that's someone that can completely blow this game wide open, just purely with the speed. Now, out of we know the talent, right? The man is a giant that runs like a cheetah, right? So we, we we're scared of him too, to be honest, because he really did. You know, that Dallas game is when he broke out, and he kind of just balled out since then. Um, but he did have a problem with drops in college. Mm-hmm. It was actually one of the because uh, we were looking for a wide receiver in that draft. So I remember we were deep into I like wide receiver it. scouts. And I think he was at like 14% or something like it was pretty high, right? I think it was like the highest out of like, you know, the top 10 wide receivers that were going to go in the draft. Have you really noticed that in the preseason or, you know, in practices or Can't. things like that? Or do you think or do you think he's kind of gotten that under control? No, I would say it's still it's still a little bit of a problem, even even in year two. Like to be completely honest, like he's dropped some in camp that you you expect him to catch. There was a play, I believe it was against the it was either against the Patriots or Seahawks in the preseason. I can't remember exactly what game. It was Seahawks. It was the finale. Uh, Jordan Love kind of lofted a deep one down the left sideline for him, and the ball hung in the air a little bit too long. So another DB was able to kind of catch up. So Watson was a little <laughs> bit doubled, but he spun around. He went up to make catch. Perfect hands, ball was right in his hands, and he couldn't hang on 
through he couldn't survive the catch through the ground and he wasn't able to hang on. So uh it's definitely still a problem for him. And you know, it's not too concerning, but you know, it's it's like the one area where it's like you can coach that. You can coach a guy through drop issues as opposed to something like, you know, if a guy is a poor route runner or he doesn't know how to kind of separate at the top of a route or he doesn't know just how to separate in general, that's a little tougher, I think, to kind of coach a guy through. But, you know, hands, catching, that's something you can definitely work on. And uh, we'll find out this year whether or not it, he's really improved. But so far, the returns haven't exactly been encouraging. Mm-hmm. Um, different ball game when the season begins. But, yeah. Yeah. What's he's your a, what's a good season for him? Sorry, go ahead, Dave. Oh no, I'll just skate with Watson lot because we both really liked them coming out. For me, it's like one thing I noticed last year was it's just his mental toughness. Like his first play in the league was a deep ball from Aaron Rodgers and he drops it. Drops right. It. I think it was it was yeah. one of the first plays. And I'm like, damn, that's tough. And then you put it very first play from scrimmage for the Packers last season. And, that was and it's like a terrible start. And and it took him a little bit, but just to have that me- mental toughness to keep at it, you know. I was like, damn, that's, I like that. You know, he came alive late in the season, but like, like I said, I was a fan of Watson. I, I'm, it's encouraging. He definitely scares me just because, I mean, he, like I said, he could just break it right open. You know, it's it, just a crazy, crazy speed, big guy. Uh, but Vicky, what, what do you have? No, I was going to say, what's your expectations for him? Like what's, what's a successful season for Watson? Cause what do you have like what? seven touchdowns last year as a rookie or something like that? It may have been more. I mean, no, I know he had three against Dallas. Yeah. He had yeah, yeah. half of them in one game, but uh, what's your expectations for that for like a second year jump? I would say as long as he cracks a thousand yards, you know, you're not expecting him to go on a tear and score, you know, five touchdowns in the span of a week or in the span of four days, which I think that was actually what it was. He had the three against Dallas and then two against Tennessee two. on Thursday night. So it was like five touchdowns in a span of, you know, four or five days, wow. which is wow. unheard of. You're not going to, you're not going to see him do things like that this season. You know, it's, it's a new year. Teams have more film on him. It's not going to happen, but a season where he's able to eclipse a thousand yards, a season where he's able to have double digit, t- double digit touchdowns, you know, that's, that's going to be a successful season for him. And if he makes a noticeable, leap as far as cleaning up some of those drops goes then yeah i would call that a successful season but i don't i actually don't see him leading the team in receiving i think it'll be romeo dobbs Dobbs, just because you have that deep threat in watson who's going to be able to win deep he's going to be able to get behind the defense and that's going to kind of create some opportunities underneath so guys like romeo dobbs guys like Jaden reed you know they're going to be able to feast underneath get some of those easy kind of intermediate completions and you know get the opportunity for some yards after the catch um but yeah, I would, I would call that a successful season for Christian Watson. Okay, sounds like a successful hey, w- season to me. A thousand, yeah. you crack thousand yards second year. I mean, well, that, didn't Mooney crack a thousand his second year? Is either yeah, second or third? Oh yeah, no, because his third he was injured. Yeah, his second year. Yeah. you're right. I think he did. Which I mean, I kind of similar situation. Where you don't, um, fair, but I could I could fair. see him doing that again this year. Just now that you have the threat. Yeah, you have the third of DJ Moore there now. You have Robert Tunyon there now. Cole Komet, I'm still really high on. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. you know, there's going to be opportunities there for Darnell Mooney to kind of, you know, like I said, wins on some of those intermediate routes. Same situation for him. Yeah. The depth oh, chart so. is just crazy different. If you look at last year in the receiving <laughs> core he was working with, I'm like, this is this is awesome. Still trying to temper expectations, mm-hmm. but it's exciting. Yeah. Now We I still were the with... worst team in the NFL. So, yeah, we got to yeah. <laughs> – we, we did have the and, number one pick for a reason. So, we got to oh, – Going from three wins to like eight to nine wins would just be refreshing. Right. You know, be like, I think okay, that's, that's like a good jump. That's a best case scenario. I, what's the rec? I think I saw it like the record, the biggest jump is like eight wins or something like that. And that's some like historic yeah. something. So like if we can get to plus six, I'm cool. Yeah. I think, I think seven, eight, nine wins. I think that wins the division. Yeah. Like oh, this yeah. is going to be, gosh. it's that open. I think, you think it's that, that bad. I'm not, <laughs> oh my. I'm not as like as much of a believer in like the Lions as like the media is. Everyone's hyping them up. I'm, I I don't see it personally. I know they went into the Lions last year. What was that? I said sorry. The Lions will lie in. That's always my Ex- philosophy. Exactly. So like I, until you can really show me, like there's no. <laughs> the Lions no are gonna lie in. The Vikings have a very explosive offense. They don't have shit for defense. I can't see them <laughs> kind of competing at the top of the division. Uh. I feel like it's going to be like the NFC South was for all those years where it was like a, a seven and nine team, eight and eight team would win the division. I think it'll be something like that. You know, it's, okay. it's going to be, you know, whoever some bad football is what you're saying. We're going to be watching some <laughs> bad football. Is whoever gonna is going to be the least bad at football is going to win the division pretty much. 
that, but that's going to be fun. That's going to be fun because oh, like yeah. at least probably three teams will be in it. You know, week fourteen. You yeah. know, in closing, we're all in the hunt. <laughs> that yep. the hunt bubble is going to be all graphic. four teams. Yeah, yeah. Totally <laughs> <laughs> man it's it's better than just the pack i mean probably not for zach the packers just running away with it you know or <laughs> given something every like year probably oh my gosh. for you guys Thank um, well i want to end it with this zach i we appreciate you again hopping on man and, and taking some time to speak with us but what what it, i'm gonna put you on the spot here what is your prediction score wise um for for next week or for this week <sighs> i'm gonna say all right don't call me a homer if i pick the packers <laughs> no <laughs> i i think <laughs> I think the Packers kind of squeak it out. I think it's a very, it's going to be a very sloppy game from both sides. I think the Packers mm-hmm. are going to look like shit. I think the Bears are going to look like shit. <laughs> but I think it'll be. I say Packers win twenty to nineteen. Oh, okay. that's so boring. boring. So when you say oh, yeah, both teams so, look like so shit, boring. are you just saying? Are you saying it's because it's just like the offenses are just not gelling yet, and the defense might be a little ahead, or kind of both of those? It's going to yeah. be one of those classic cases of. You know, whenever a game ends and you kind of chalk it up to it just being like, oh, it's early in the season, you know, teams yeah. teams don't know who they are yet. They don't have an identity. They're still trying to, you know, establish who they are and get their kind of feet under them. I think it'll be kind of, you know, something more like that. Okay. Hey, in other words, I mean, boring. That's, that's all I 2019, heard. That, that 2019, score, would, it would suck. <laughs> it would, trust me. I, that's that's my gut feeling. I want yeah. I want a goddamn shootout. I want teams driving oh, up and down too. the field. I want no yeah. semblance of defense whatsoever. That could be a win-win because if if it's forty-two, well, not for the defense. If it's like 35-32 and it's a classic, and we're cool on the long that. side, but both quarter or at least Justin Fields plays very well, and maybe Jordan Love does too. It's like okay, damn. All right, here we go. You know, yeah, it's gonna be a fun season for both. You got yeah. Then you got something to look forward to at that point. Exactly. But if it's like a twenty nineteen, you know, crappy <laughs> slugfest, and it's like, okay, what the hell well, do I take away from that? Yeah. Well, Zach, at least you want a question. <laughs> you know? Yeah, no, right? Yeah. That's you, get a, you, get a, you get to go home and be happy for a full yeah. week. That's that's Man. what you take away from it. And, we, and now, we're stuck being 0 and 9 against you guys in September. Yeah. Same old bear. So <laughs> that's exactly what you take away. Nothing's changed. Zach, <laughs> how much if the Packers win, are you gonna be are you gonna be merciless? Are you gonna be dunking on everyone on Twitter? Or do you have specifics? Or how or does it have to be yeah, like where's a, your moral compass? a convincing win? Or do you have a no, moral compass? Then, Zach? <laughs> you know, are I, you a good person? You know, I don't think I. Have, no, I think I'm a terrible person. <laughs> Join the club, me too. No, I, I. You know what? At the end of the day, you know, like this, this rivalry has transcended just the football. Like, oh my yeah. god! So like my mention sometimes, there's personal insults Absolutely. and you know, everybody attacking everybody and eating at each other, and you know, fucking death threats and terrible DMs, and it's like. At the end of the day, we need to like we need to remember like this is this is a goddamn children's game. Yeah. Like kids literally play this game. We are <laughs> arguing online over people who don't know we exist. Okay. So I think you're not putting you know, any money in our pocket either. That's the always think about exactly. Like, my, like is there, in my pocket. Well, I mean, technically you do get paid too. Yeah, to talk about, true. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but, but but the but, Twitter aspect, I'm like, where's this money? You know what I mean? Hey, getting paid Twitter oh. now too. <laughs> yeah, as I say, that's true. So maybe that maybe yeah. that is adding fuel to the fire. So. The Elon yeah. bucks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tweet. I'm gonna tweet ridiculous stuff just for for the engagement. Man, it, it is I'm fun. Just... It is fun to see. Twitter is a shit show. I, I, I mean, with bear, I, I've seen more. I think, which is weird, because I think the Packers and Bears are the most mediocre me, mediocrity like team value wise because like obviously you guys lost uh aaron Rodgers, so like you're not as good on paper and then us we're still i mean again we had the number one pick last year but i've never seen more hype and more talk on both sides as if both teams have super bowl championship rosters and they're attacking each other like they just won the goddamn super bowl and i'm like no like where's yeah. this i'm confident and hyped about the team but like where is this pedestal that y'all stand on well, i'm like well, was, we are we are two quarters that have, ne- that have so many questions and very little answers i was telling zach i was i was dming i was like man i feel like some of these guys think that we have peyton manning like prime time indy <laughs> colts playoff appearance after playoff appearance and i'm like that. I hope so. I hope we do, but it's like, man, we have we haven't even gotten there yet. You know, it's well, like yeah, it was because like, what's his face tweeted that one video it was like, oh, Justin Fields can't throw, and it was like a throw to like the 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 left ba- the left boundary a little behind him, and there was yeah, a little behind him, and it was like a you know an out route for ten yards, and it was like, like if you want to show that Justin Fields can throw, don't show that. You know, sh- find something else. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, but there's a lot better examples. There is, a lot. there is, yes. there's, there's a happy I, medium. I, you know, there's, there's the happy most. Medium, 
the most oh, impressive ahead. part of that play was you know the fact that he stood there in the pocket, took a hit, and still put you know put the ball in there. That was more impressive than the throw to me. But yeah, I digress. The Chicago Bears. That's literally every play. That man, I'm surprised he didn't get folded like a lot. Which actually he did. I'm surprised how he survived this the season alone. He should have got an award or something. Yeah, hate you know. him. I don't know because ridiculous. So wasn't he? Was he the most sacked quarterback last year? I, yeah, I know fifty plus times. He would have. Yeah, and the funny thing is, if he didn't have legs, number. he would have been more. Like it probably would have been God. NFL record. It was, but he it also, was that bad. you know, his legs also got him in trouble sometimes. You know, That's it's true. like there's a happy medium. Like, so I think he, I think he can throw better. You know, I don't think he's a running back. I know all those jokes, but I, I think he can get better. There's just a happy medium. I think that we're going to find out a lot. And it's like, we want those answers now. And some people want to project and, you know, his potentials through the roof, but it's like, he's not there yet. You know, there's a still, he has to, a lot he has to prove and, you know, starts week one, but Zach, man, we appreciate you hopping on. Um, check out his stuff. Z- CB, uh, CBS sports, right. Is where you're coming yeah. to the Packers this Packer year. Report CBS sports. Yeah. yeah. It's the- Give him a follow. Give appreciate him a follow. that you guys yeah. give him a follow great coverage over there um if you want any insight on the packers heading up to this week go ahead and check him out um and zach we'll have to have you on again man whenever you guys want man i i will happily hop after, on after after, after dub, so it might be maybe it's a couple years but i i can't i'm sorry zach you're not <laughs> welcome back if we lose i can't I'm mental <laughs> compa- i can't i won't be a nice guy and i like you so we if gotta- it makes you if it makes you feel any better to answer your question earlier i will try if the Packers win, I will try to be, you know, cool, calm, and collected on Twitter. Yeah. I will, I will no, try. I say, that's, no, that's I say like, talk your, sh- talk your no, shit. No, no, I say no, go, I can't, go ahead, go ahead. As long I'm as it's not, not to me or Dave, I'm, I'm not going to cool. kick you guys go while ahead. you're down. I refuse. <laughs> I refuse to do that. I have a little we bit did. of a moral compass. Yeah, but we've been down so long. It's just where we are. Like, it's never any type of kick. We're down. You know what I mean? So <laughs> it's never any kick. You know what I mean? When are we up? So. <laughs> You're going to be waiting Amen. for a while. So I'm, I'm like, hey, look, if you're going to talk shit, talk shit. Because you know what? If we win, we're probably going to be doing it because we've never been to this spot. So <laughs> I have like one guy. It. I have one guy. I think I will. I have a couple bookmarks where I'm like, OK, I think I have a quote tweet that I have to send out just because I'm like, it's a little ridiculous. But mm, a couple I wonder who that guy is. is. Who is uh, yeah, I think we all know. Who it's not. Is. It's not Zach. It's not Zach. Um, no, no, no. I meant it's <laughs> begin with the P and second uh, name. Yeah, maybe. With the P. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it, I think, oh, it's it's Peter. It's fucking yeah, it, is, it yeah. might be Peter. Uh, yeah, he just has a couple. It's similar to like I, I mean I've like when Trubisky was there, I had some crazy takes and I've learned from him. But it's like man, like he's just and he, rightfully so. The Packers have just owned the Bears. It's like so. It's like man, if this if we can just win this week, I think it's gonna be great. Like we'll we'll have one week to be like just to be like ah, you know, this is great, and we'll see how it progresses the rest rest of the season. But <laughs> damn. It's our I Super Bowl, Zach. So I, you, know what? you know what? I support it 100. What you guys do, what you got to do. You if if the Bears win, then go right for it, and send those send those uh bookmark quoted tweets because <laughs> I, I I see it. Look, I I love Peter, but I see how yeah. it goes after the Bears sometimes. Like he's like, Yo, he's, oh yeah, he literally he pokes the bear. No yes, pun intended. That man yeah. loves poking. The bear yeah. kicking it, shooting it, whatever it is, he loves to. It's it's the rivalry, the man. The it's it's Bears Packers at its finest. You know, take the good in with the, the Elon bad. Bucks. That's what it is. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, Zach. Well, hey, you have a good night, man, and hope you enjoy the game. Don't work too hard while you're covering it, okay? And you guys as well. Have a good weekend and enjoy the game. All right, man. absolutely. Thanks, Zach. Later, guys. All right, Ficky. Well, I honestly love Zach. We appreciate him hopping on, joining us. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I got it. Oh, there you go. It. I was going to say, you got it. We'll flip it real quick. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Um, again, appreciate Zach. Go ahead and check him out, uh, CBS Packer Sports. Um, if you want to, you know, just kind of a view of Wisconsin, kind of see how they are. He already said they're kind of confident, you know, and and, and probably should As be. They should be. I was going to say, why, why? the history shows that they should be. There is nothing. You could look at all yeah. the stats, everything. They have the better team on paper. Right. Like, I still feel confident about the Bears, but they have the better team on paper. They've historically kicked our ass in September. There's no reason they've been dominating. You say better, like- you say better team on paper. Defense, I, I agree. I think they have a better defense. I really do. But offensively, yeah. I don't know. Well, Maybe it's just. Well, here's, here, here's actually a comment that I think kind of goes on my point okay. right here. Who has the better running game? I think we do have a great running game, okay. but they do too. They've always had a great running game. And my Aaron only concern Jones, is AJ we had, Dillon. 
Yep, the 32nd ranked rushing defense last year. Obviously, it'll be better. You're not going to be 32nd again. Yeah. But, you know, we haven't seen it yet. So that's my biggest concern because well, if they can get the run game on us, love is going to, like, you know, obviously the run game helps out passing. It's going to be a field day, you know? So yeah. I'm like, Ugh. so I want to go ahead and stop you there. Let's go, let's move to our keys to the game here. We're, we're going to wrap okay, up today's enough. show. We have a, uh, a couple more segments for you but keys to the game we'll, we'll probably do a couple here one or probably two or three but Vic, i'll start with you what is uh, one key that the bears you know for this game that they have to either do stop on either side of the ball well i just said it a little tease yeah. there but you gotta stop the run you know what i mean if we can stop the run and we can get love and passing obvious passing downs right mm -hmm. then we can like I, because we don't have a great D line when it comes to pass rush, right? But if we know it's a pass, we can put in that NASCAR team, I think is what we call it, and just send the guys at him, you know, or even send some pressure on the outside, whatever it needs to be. So then he feels uncomfortable back there. But if we have a run game, it's going to be so easy with play action and things like that. The man's going to have so much time back there. So that's my biggest, like, the biggest takeaway we need. Okay. So that's number one. My number one is get Justin Fields and the offense going, like, early. Like get those easy touches, you know, DJ Moore screen, um, get Justin in a rhythm. Um, you know, for me, it's like, you can't start slow. Uh, the pressure will kind of build. If you, if you let the Packers, you know, that D line, it can be nasty, especially with, you know, Rashawn Gary, if even if he's on a snap count, like they're going to utilize him third downs, you know, and if it's third and long, that's going to be dangerous territory for, for Justin. Uh, so if they can start strong, just, you know, get Mooney, Claypool, Komet, the run game as well just have to start strong on offense for me just because we've seen too many times where it's like three and out three and out you get down 10-0 the pressure starts to build you know this is a huge matchup they're gonna feel it so for me starting strong early on offense is i think number one uh Ficky, give me your your number two key yeah, so I'm going to, I mean, kind of a cop-out answer, but flip it. Let's get the run game going, right? Because if we get the yeah. run game going, it's obviously we know Fields dominates play action, right? Roll out, boot slides, all that stuff, right? So if we can get that yeah. run game going, we're going to also put Fields in strong positions off those play actions to where we're going to see some big plays, whether it's, you know, him hitting the target downfield or even taking off with his leg. So if we can really establish a run against this defense, which is pretty, you know, pretty good, right? At least on paper, right? Joe Barry's dog shit but but on paper you know they're, they're pretty good yeah. you know if we can if we can establish the run it's going to help us open up that pass game which is going to be beneficial for fields like you said getting those easy open passes yeah. you know to get to get the okay. momentum going um my second one is win the turnover battle here like i i know it's it seems like a cop out but it's like you got if you if you can make jordan love make a mistake or two and yeah. get some short fields which i think with this secondary even if we don't get pressure I think, you know, the speed of Kyler Gordon, you know, Tyreek Stevenson, he can make a play. I think if they can just win the turnover battle as well and, you know, obviously start strong on offense, but winning the turnover battle will be huge. If it's two to one, two oh would be even better. Um, and whether it's, a, I don't know if you can get a strip sack, you know, with the D line, but just maybe two interceptions, an interception or two, a forced fumble, you know, peanut punch, something like that. Yeah. Win the turnover battle. I think you have a really good chance at least sneaking out. I would say sneaking out, at least just winning this game, you know, um, so number yeah, three, well, the, are you picky? Well, I was gonna say the the back to go off what you're saying. That absolutely, yeah. The stats show when you win the turnover battle. Obviously, it, your chances of winning the game are like super high, right? So, it, especially it'll be good to see how. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's you what know? that's what I'm saying. We need to get pressure in Love's face because that's where he's gonna make those yeah. mistakes. And if we can't get the D line to get, you know, so to him, for it's me, where be that issue. pressure's coming from. Uh, before we get to your third point here, yeah. third key for the game for me, that pressure I, it doesn't have to be constant. You know, for me, like that's that's a big task for any team, but especially a, a line that is young and then also doesn't have nearly top end talent. But if Yannick Ngakwe can go ahead and get you one sack that game, that's one pressure. That's that could be a huge third down play. Swing it right there. Also, maybe get a nickel blitz. Kyler Gordon, you even yep. throw in, you know, Brisker, who led the team last year in sacks. If you can just get two sacks and then maybe a quarterback hit or two that right there especially in key points, whether it be a third quarter drive, fourth quarter drive, um, end of the half, end of the first half, you know, you know, two minute drill, just getting those big plays when you need them is going to be important. You can't, you obviously you're not going to get pressure. You know, even the play, best yeah. defenses can't get pressure every single um, rep, yeah. but if you can get two or three big time, whether it's, you know, rushing his clock, getting a sack. Um, I think that's huge. You know, as far as just creating those pressures, 
um, with what they have available. So, well, going off of that for my third one, perfect transition, right? If we get those sacks and he's in third and long, like okay. we need to make sure that they get them like, We need to make sure we don't beat ourselves. We saw so many times last year where it'd be like third and 12. Well, we give up a first down. What are we doing? Come on. That's we, we did everything right before then. Come on. Can we not give up 12 yards here? So, you know, they're going to get their third and fours, you know, their third and sevens, or, th- or maybe there. But like, you know, that mid range to, you know, short range, obviously it's easier to get those yardage. But when we're in positions where it's like statistically, we, it's going to lead to a stop. We need to make sure that actually is the case. And that's going to involve, like you said, pass rush, you know, yeah, uh, the scheme, you know, covering the different type of coverages, you know, and how we make that up so that, you know, he's confused and things like that. Uh, so I just, I, I, okay. we can't, we can't beat ourselves. And I guess this would tie into it is penalties. So far in the preseason, we didn't actually have a lot, which is a good sign, right? But we can't have those third down. I feel like know, that last long. preseason game, I, am I wrong? Was, was there not a lot of penalties? Like, I feel, yeah, in both the, sides. It was, and that's because that third preseason game was most like a lot of yeah. the younger guys were in yeah. the majority of that. So I'm not surprised. You know, people that aren't aren't on the team didn't make the 53 man roster. So that's kind of expected. But yeah, we need to keep mm-hmm. that penalties down, like under five penalties, hopefully through the whole game and less than like 30, 40 yards. That'd be great. That would help lead to a successful win, in my opinion. But what's your yeah. final one? So my final point, I'm kind of leaning a couple different ways, but I'm going to kind of wrap it up with the with the rookies or the young players. So like mm. Darnell Wright, first start, just obviously doesn't have to be perfect, but he's going to have to have a big game. You know, you're playing – it's going to be a huge atmosphere for him. Obviously played oh. high-level college football, but I don't think it's anything like he's going to see come week one, the stakes, new era, a lot on the line outside yes. of just bragging rights. So our rookies – um, Tyreek Stevenson, Darnell Wright. I think they're going to have to maybe not make plays. I'd like to see Stevenson. I think he needs to. I think he needs to just, he may make a mistake or two, but he's going to have to make up for it with a big, you know, pass defense or just an interception on love. Mm-hmm. Tall ask, but at the same time, I think it's possible with that secondary and all, you know, even if it's a tip and it goes to Eddie or something like that, but just make a play yeah. and then also just try to limit mistakes, both for Darnell Wright, who's going to be protecting Justin Fields. Um, if you lose a rep, that's fine. You just can't lose six, seven, eight reps. You know, you yeah, have please, to, please no. You know what I'm saying? Please not. But this, but the thing is, he's a rookie. It, it, yeah, he could have a tough mistaken. day out there. Like obviously, high expectations, top ten pick. But we just, if he can just look serviceable, I think that'll be a huge win. Give Justin, yeah. you know, a, a reason not to be worried. You know, hey, I know I got my protection there. If you get, if you mess up a rep, you know, your guy gets through. It's okay. But just limit those. Same with Tyreek Stevenson when you're playing. You know, Watson, Dobbs. Like there's speed, legit speed on the field. And it's like, obviously he's aggressive and they're going to try to, you know, use that against him. They're going to target him. Yeah, they're going to target him. They're they're not going after JJ. They're not going after JJ. Um, Even even Gordon. So it's like that guy's Stevenson's going to get a lot of attention. And if he can just, one, either make a play early, that's going to stop. Love's going to be, okay. But if he gets picked on, it's like try to limit those mistakes. Keep guys in front of you. Um, yeah. the mental game is going to be huge. And I have all the faith Tough in them, for these but it's like, yeah. but for me, it's like these two, you know, I can go all the rookie cast, but rookie cast, but those are the only two I think are starting. I, I was about um, to ask how many are starting. I think it's just Darnell just and two. Stevenson, right? Which yeah, is because awesome. the defensive ta- Pickens and Billings are going to be second. Yeah. So they'll be rotating they'll be in their there. D-line. Yeah, yeah but, but if you look at last one. year, I think we had four, four rookies um, who ended up playing, who started week one. Yeah, it's like, Brisker, you like Gordon. seeing that, but at the same time, now we have that depth. Where it's like, okay, we can give these guys a little bit of time to kind of yeah learn, you know, like hey, with the uh, you know the the guys on the line, come in, get some snaps, get some reps. But you're not starting, you're not going against, you know, starters here. Particularly, they still might get a lot of reps against them. But it's like reserves and everything like that. It's going to be interesting. So for me, those two are specifically what I'm thinking. Um, do you have any other like a fourth? Maybe well, any well, you know what. There? No- you know, now I'm thinking about it because, you you know, thinking of Darnell Wright, I want to see how this line kind of performs together because, you know, we saw yeah. that the depth chart came out. Lucas Patrick's going to be starting a center. We haven't seen that, or at least I have yeah. any reports of that. That was not like a surprise, but like there hasn't been anything prior where they're like Lucas Patrick's center, right? Maybe last yeah. week, but like not throughout most of camp. Well, at least when uh, Jenkins got injured. So I like I like Cody White here going to left guard, and I like uh, Patrick going there because that's their natural positions. So that should be you know I'm, I'm cool with that. But I want to see how well the offensive line 
plays together because we haven't seen at least this five play together. The good thing is Jones, Wright, and uh, uh, Nate Davis, you know what I mean? They're all – well, Nate Davis, I guess, that's another question mark too. But it, it's it's good that at least our tackles, even though they're both the youngest on the line, they are, they've are they kind of been set in their, in their position and got a lot of reps during the camp, which is great. Um, but I would kind of want to see how like the O line performs overall, especially against like this D line is, I mean, it's not like top 10, but you know, it's, it's a pretty good D D line, you know, like uh, as a test for this, I would say kind of new formed offensive line that we have. So that's definitely, yeah. my eyes are going to be focused on that. Cause if they can win that battle, or at least like you said, kind of be serviceable overall where fields isn't back there running for his life. We're definitely yep. giving ourselves a really good chance to win. Well, so speaking of the depth chart, um, as of September 5th today, Fishbane, uh, a couple other guys tweeted out the official depth chart for this week. Um, so take it with a grain of salt, but I'm pretty sure this is what they're going to come out in. They yeah. have Braxton Jones at left tackle, not a surprise. Cody Whitehair, left guard. He took snaps at center all offseason. So, I mean, kind of expected well, it. Well, he Lucas was, he was, I mean, ahead. it was more recent. It was not till Tevin went out. So, I, you know, that is his natural position. So I feel I feel like him going back is not going to be like a learning. No, yeah, he's, he was there I, I all think last season. So. I, I think some people are, you know, some people are like, ah, I hate it. You know, for me, it's like, man, I like the versatility. S- similar to Lucas Patrick, you know, yeah. um, just the versat- versatility that they bring. And then Dan Feeney as well. But we'll go through the center, Lucas Patrick, right guard, Nate Davis. And then we got a rookie right tackle, Darnell Wright. Backing him up at right tackle is Larry Borum, who was a starter last year. Jatari yeah. Carter. I like that. I like him. I yep. think it's a good serviceable Dan Feeney, which he can play guard or center. I believe he's yep. more right guard. Yeah. Am mm-hmm. I right on it? I can't remember. I, yep. I forgot the amount of snaps he played up. Might get that bit mixed up, but I like his versatility as well. I think that's going to be huge. Just how far this line has come. You got um, Larry Borum at left tackle backing up Braxton Jones, who's a, he wasn't a starter. I think he actually lost his spot last year um, to Braxton, but it's yep. like the depth there on the old line is awesome you know you, maybe it's much better than, it, it's it's i'd say it's in a much better position now and then once tevin comes back it's even a better position because i think yeah. if you get tevin back at left guard cody goes to center patrick's then back feeney's now uh-huh. now you have patrick and feeney both as your interchangeable inner interior offensive lineman right so I, I'm not going to go as far as you and say like it's like fantastic, but compared mm-hmm. even with the Tevin Jenkins injury where it's been, I'd say, you know, the past three yeah. weeks, I think that's good. That Feeney signing, again, I, he's not like a star, right? Like we no, don't need to no, freak out. No, like it was no. a six-round draft but pick man. I think we got for him, but it helps. us. It's a serviceable, it's a serviceable, Stability. yes. I think of like you a know. Riley Reef. He's he's a little young. I mean, he's a little better. Like Riley Reef, we yeah. got him. But I think of someone like that, you know, they can come in and you feel that confident. Mola gives him a little extra – you know, <laughs> yeah, it's a extra, plus you know, one on couple, strength if it was mad. Yeah, plus one. So, but, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I just feel like uh, it's a, a much better position. You know, obviously we want yeah. Tevin in there, but we'll, we'll have to. But when he gets back, man, there. that line it just gets even better. You know, as far Absolutely. as that, as far as star, you know, quality starters. I mean, J- Jenkins, you can, he may be the best on the line when healthy. Yeah, like, he was not a even beast last year. We haven't seen. No, Brian he was a yet. beast. Yeah, but it's like, man, that. He's damn good. And big it's like, loss, if you can, loss. if you can survive, you know, we, we looked at the schedule early in the year, but if you can get to three and one, two and two, three and one would be great by the time he gets back, you know, it'd be awesome. Especially if everyone can remain. Yeah, healthy, I mean, I'm not, I won't be complaining about three and one, your first four games, bro. That's the same win total well, we had last year. I think we were three and one last year too. And we lost yeah. 14 straight, but, 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 you know, I'm not going to be mad about that. You know, yeah. I just need a one and oh, first, let me, let me, let's just get me this first one. Yeah. So I don't, my anxiety at an all time high. Like, just get me a dub against the team that I hate, please. <laughs> I'm not asking for much. You know what I mean? I'm not asking yeah. for much. <laughs> well, hey, man. I, I, like I said, the the roster I think has just gotten a lot better. We've talked about it all off season, so no need no need to go further. Everything yeah. else on the depth chart is pretty much the same. Um, I think the only thing that's different tip or is Trent Taylor, most recent addition. He's ex- as expected going to be the punt returner. Then we have Bayless Jones Jr., who is going to be the kickoff returner, which, as I mean, he was, I think, top five in the league last year as far as yards. Yeah, in average yards. Yeah, average yards per yeah. kickoff he was. So yeah. I love that one. Tyler Scott's backing him up there. Um, no other changes, really. No other surprises, it which be. is good. 
Yeah, now, please, no, we want the starters and you know, everyone to be kind of solid going into week one, which is great. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, before we get into our X factors, which we're going to go ahead and name the biggest X factor on both sides of the ball. Vicky, okay. um, obviously we'll try to give different ones. Before we do that, if you are liking the show, if you are liking the content, just go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. Uh, it really does help the channel grow. It's an easy way to support the, the podcast. We do appreciate it. Um, and then everyone that's listening, you know, on Apple iTunes, uh, go ahead and rate the show um, if, if you can. We appreciate it. But if you're just tuning in, you like the content, we appreciate it. Now, X Factors. Offense. I'll start with you, Ficky. Outside of Justin Fields, because that's too easy. Yeah, I mean, that's obviously, too right? He's always so, in every game. I mean, that's a qu- every qu- yeah. quarterback's an X Factor, right? You, 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 yeah. That's that's for most teams. And I, I'll um, almost say DJ Moore, too, because I think yeah, those that's, are too that's easy That's a cop-out, too. So yeah, just like yeah, a surprise, like we know – DJ Moore, these you know, Justin Fields, they may get theirs, but who's the other guy that needs to perform? So to kind since of I can't do it, flip since I can't do a unit, like if it was a unit, I'd go O line, right? It's just that important. But yeah, since I, mean, I could. can't, yeah, but I'm that's a good factor. Out, but I, if yeah. I'm gonna do one X factor, it's actually gonna be Cole Komet. I want a safety net for Fields on those third downs, right? And also, we know he's a tremendous run blocker. So if he's blocking well, the run game gets going helps fields out so i you know we saw commit a lot of good plays last year some big plays right and then also but like i want fields when he's in third down you know what i mean feel comfortable like oh Moore's not open because obviously he's gonna look more his way which i can't blame him he knows that he yeah. can trust commit and go there so that i think okay. I, I, there hasn't been much talk about commit but like i feel like he's actually gonna have a one of the bigger jumps out of anyone on this roster in my opinion like for the and I know like a, he's not like a Travis Kelsey. It's not like that type of jump, but like, I think he's going to get himself into the conversation of like top seven type tight end. Right. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Okay. That's, yeah. That's I like that one. I, I think commit, I, I love what you said on third down, just a safety valve. Um, even if it's like yeah. a, you know, a check down or something along those lines for me, biggest X factor outside of Justin Fields, DJ Moore, Again, may seem easy, but he's a big guy too. Chase Claypool. We we've we've read the hype. We've he's had a good camp. You know, he had, he needs to prove people wrong. Um, Claypool. There we go. Yeah, uh, there it is. <laughs> I, I didn't even I didn't even see that. But anyways, I, I think it is. I'm high on Claypool. I've been. It's been hard for me not to just tweet my high expectations, and I feel so good about it. Like I have not felt so confident about a player in a while, and I just feel like Claypool, since Mitch Trubisky, huh? Since Mitch, <laughs> Mitch fucking Trubisky. Uh, no, no, man. Like, like I, I'm being, I'm being real. Like his talent yeah, yeah, yeah. is, is there. We see it. His, you know, uh, you know how big he is, and the just you can't teach that. You're not, you know, what I'm saying like he has some freak. things that it's like if he can put up, yeah, freak, perfect. So if yeah. he can just have a couple big plays, mm-hmm. alleviate some pressure from DJ Moore, help Darnell Mooney out as well. I think he that's what the passing game could just go to a huge I tell you what huge if Claypool can Yeah, if he's going off, I'm saying like I I agree if Claypool mm-hmm. is going off we're winning the game. I'm telling you right now, if Claypool goes off, yeah. we're winning the game cuz that means if he's going off, we know DJ Moore is going to be do what he needs to do, right? Komet's going to yeah. be his standard Komet. I like it's when your wide receiver 3 is going off now they have to adjust to that, which means now they're putting focus on wide receiver three, which means now wide receiver two and wide receiver one. You know what I mean? It's like, I would love to see that. And if also, if that's the case, I also it gives me confidence just moving forward, not only with Claypool, but with Getsy in this offense. Because if he can get Claypool going where, you know, it's kind of been like, you know, other like the Steelers haven't been able to the past two years, that, that lets me show that we have good coaching in the aspect of, we're putting our players in position of their strengths, right? We're not yeah. Matt Nagy who said, I came here to, I didn't come here to run the I formation. He's like, well, if Komet is, I mean, not Komet, sorry. If Claypool is good at mm-hmm. these routes, let's utilize that. Let's use his big body, those type of things. So yeah, I agree. I'd actually be more happy if Claypool is an X factor, just because I think that would lead to like a more exciting game in essence. Yeah. That means higher I think ceiling on points. offense. Absolutely. Yeah. I think we're putting okay, up man. points. Like I said, enough of my Claypool propaganda. Like I said, we'll see. He has to back it up. It. He has, yeah, he has to back it up. Um, let's move it to defense. Biggest X factor there. Um, I think it can be anyone, obviously. So who who are you looking you know at? What? Kind of make some make some plays. Oh man, so I kind of I'm kind of split on this. 
who Jack I Sanborn. want to see as our boy. No, <laughs> not Big Neck. No, what who I want to see is our boy, you know, Spidey. So Kyler Gordon, like that'd be okay. great. You know, if he's really balling out in that nickel position, call, you know, if he's maybe on some pressure, some blitz, things like that, just being all over the field, which we've seen him do. If he's doing that, I think that just helps the defense overall. But I would say unique Ngakwe because I, I re- we really got to get pressure. Like, I, okay. that's almost more important. I, like as a fan, I'm going to be more excited probably about, you know, Kyler Gordon, just cause you know, I, I feel like he's, he's just more exciting. A guy that we know is going to be here for a while cornerstone for this de- defense, but from a production standpoint, if unique's back there, just causing havoc, complete chaos, then that means love, you know, has to make quicker decisions. He's probably going to lead to some turnovers, some bad throws, things like that. And that's actually going to help us win the game. So sorry. Yeah. I kind of went two X factors there, but Taking That's kind of how I feel. Man. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's just the whole fair. defense. So let's just go through the list. Yeah, I just want okay. to make it harder. For I'm going to say, um, <laughs> I'm going to make it quick and easy. We'll get to questions after this. Um, I think we have a couple, right, Fick? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. We Start, got okay, so I'm going to go Jalen Johnson. Keep it simple. He's number oh, yeah. one. I want him to lock whoever it is. You know, obviously, Watson's going to move. But for me, let's go ahead and have – if he, Jalen, he wants to get paid. Obviously, extension, at least as of right now, Tuesday, it has not come through. Could it come before the game? Probably not. Uh, yeah, probably. maybe but for me it's like he needs he, he wants to get paid he's going to play now go go prove that you can lock you know watson up he, uh, watson obviously younger receiver it's not Devonte adams and even even last year when adams was there or the year it was two years ago now right yep no you know yeah two years because not last adams season. got his i think even jj got his but or justin jefferson when uh, Jalen Johnson was covering him. He was able to kind of lock him up a little bit. Obviously, those star, those elite tier receivers, they're going to get their, you know, 100, 110 yards. It's just, it's part of their game. Yeah, it's yeah. that easy for them. But with Watson, it's like he's a rookie. I think, you, you know, obviously he's a vet. Jalen has a little bit on him. So obviously, speed's going to be a factor. But I think Jalen should be able to win this matchup whenever they are going one on one. Now, how often will that occur? I don't know. Yeah, they're I was gonna actually probably not target. They're probably not going to start, but for me, it's like when they do, or even if they do go Jalen's way, make the most of it. So for me, yeah. my X factor on defense, get us a pick. It's something that that's the reason he's not getting paid, in my opinion, is because of the Paul, you know, the turnover. Yeah, the turnover. He just doesn't get them. So it's yeah. like one way yeah. to get that paycheck. Why not get a pick? So, oh, yeah. I, I mean, I have all faith in Jalen Johnson. I feel like he does make plays like the ball's just not thrown to him a lot. You know what I mean? So yeah. it'll be interesting. I I wonder if he will follow Watson. You know what I mean? Or is he going to sit That's on what the I'm right saying. side I'm, only? I'm, it'll be interesting. I'm not sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And act, yeah, that that will be a fun battle to see how that how that plays out. For sure. Actually, the whole secondary, I think, is just going to be fun overall to watch. I think that's the most exciting part of our defense. Like, even with the linebacker core, yeah. like, I love, I think that's our strongest part of our defense. But from an exciting standpoint and some of the players, I think that secondary is going to be making some plays. Whether we see it against the Packers, I don't know. But like, season long, I think they're going to be probably have the most exciting plays of all the season, in my opinion, minus Fields and DJ Moore. That's a given. Absolutely. All right, man. Well, hey, we're wrapping up the show. Let's get the questions and then we'll get the predictions. Absolutely. Yes, sir. So let's let's start here. So Justin Mueller said, what's the better battle? Bears. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name, by the way, but I think that's right. I think what's the right. better battle? Bears wide receivers versus Packers secondary or Packers wide receivers versus Bears secondary? That's a great question. I'll wow. let you go first. That's a fun one. <sighs> Man, I th- uh, I want to go with our defense. Like I love our receivers, but it's like I think it's I, I'm excited to see our young guys like Tyreek Stevenson. I want to see Kyler Gordon see because he's had a great training camp. He's really good practice. You see a lot of good stuff. So I want to see that Spidey celebration, man. I want to see him lock yeah. somebody up, maybe get a pick. So for me, it's like I'll be watching that because I do expect the Bears receivers because I think they have a lot of talent with that trio of Claypool, Moore, and and, and Mooney. That I think there's going to be plays. I expect that to come. So for me, I'm like, let's Better lock be. up these young guys. Yeah, let's lock up yeah. these young guys on the Packers. Like, we see a lot of hype, and rightfully so. They are young. They are talented. But it's like, you're at home. Let's make some plays. And so I'll be watching that. I think that's where I'll get fired up. Um, not the most, because, I mean, you get a DJ Moore, Justin Fields touchdown, or, or Claypool, or whatever it might be. It's like, that's hype too. But it's like, for me, let's lock them up, man. Let's make yeah. it hard on them, especially because Jordan Love, I want him to suck. At least for week one, you know? <laughs> please, please, bro. Just, just one Maybe. game. I'm not even talking the whole season. I don't want them to suck the whole season. But they don't need Caleb Williams. You know what I mean? I need you to be 
mediocre yeah. or above average at best. You know what I mean? Like I can't yeah. have. Well, that's a great question. What about what, what about you, Vic? Man, how are you feeling? Yeah, I'm gonna go. What are you leaning? So, so I think I gotta agree with you. Just because the Packers wide receiver core is so young, uh -huh. they're actually the the Packers are the second or maybe the youngest team in the NFL. So, you know, Damn. they obviously have more. Pre you know, with JJ and obviously Bojack, you know, you got more veteran yeah. veteran pre presence back there. Martellus Bennett. Yep. So, um, but I think so it's going to be the average age is 25 and a half, even with Martellus Bennett and everyone like that. So take that for yeah, what it, it is. Yeah. It's going to be, it, well, and, and then another thing too, is like, I can't go our offense yet just because I haven't, I don't know if I have full trust in the passing just yet. I can be proved wrong easily. I know on yeah. paper we have some dogs, but also like they have Jair Alexander and Darnell Savage, both great players. Obviously Jair is one of the best corners in the league. So the I, I think, I think, yeah, I think if we're going to pick somewhere where we could, we're more likely to take advantage, I think it's going to be our secondary versus their wide receiver core. So great question now. Um, okay. Let's go to the next one. That guy 44 said, does Gary being on a pitch count affect anything? Absolutely. He's, he's a great player. The least oh, amount yeah. of reps we can get him on the field. That's great. Anytime you can take a good player off the field, that's going to be fantastic. Yeah. I, it's easy. I mean, the pitch count is going to be utilized for those big, big third downs, you know, yep. big plays. Whenever there's a big play, I expect him to be in there. Obviously it's a pitch count. So maybe they're not 10, 15, but man, they're going to utilize them and they're going to make it an emphasis to bring him in when it counts. And oh, yeah. so, I was just about to say that when, when but, it matters, he's going to be on the field. Oh so. my God. Yeah. But it's like, that's why you take advantage first and second. He's not there. Let's get the run game going. Let's get these yep. easy plays. So on third down, it's not third and six, third and seven, it's third and two. Right. Makes Much it a little easier. bit easier. Oh, don't even get the third up down. You know? <laughs> yeah. Don't even get the third down. Don't even get yeah. there. Yeah, let's just, let's no, just keep But I think it matters down. for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Great question though. Okay. So Tareen said Zach's, uh, oh, so this was for Zach. Sorry. We couldn't ask him. We'll have to ask him next time, but thoughts on oh, the yeah. Packers special teams. Damn. Uh, so I don't have like super like obviously insider knowledge on this, but the Packers special teams in the past couple of years has kind of been iffy. Um, it's actually cost them playoff games, right? Cause it's been that bad. I think that was two years ago. It was real bad. So I don't yeah. know their, if they have a new coach in there or whatnot, but I would just they think do. like Rick Barcelli, the best specialty. He's the highest oh, paid. Oh, was that the one the from, uh, from the Raiders? I almost said uh, Vegas. No, yeah. it is. Vegas. So I think yeah. I, I'm not, I can't say on Zach, but I've heard that it's a lot better. The guy, obviously he's so. the highest paid special teams coach. I, I don't know if that's out hundred, but it, you, you just kind of read between the lines. They, he, well, he, he was, was going, going for a head, for coach head coaching jobs. Yeah. That's Cause he saying. was the interim in Las Vegas. And yeah, because I think so, we were trying to get him and he got he got picked up. So they I mean, I'm going to put this. Yeah, I'm not like we are not going to lose because of the Packers special teams. Let's just put it that way. That's how I feel. They're it's mm -hmm. they don't have Devin Hester back there. There's nothing remarkable. Yeah. Pat O'Donnell hey, just got released. He's gone. not even on the team. So, yeah. So Trader. good riddance. Don't let the door hit you. On, yeah, don't let the door I hit you on the way him. out. <laughs> Until he went to Green Bay, which I know. Get your check. Get your, you know, it is. What it is. I mean, we have two Green Bay. Green Bay. We have. We have two. I mean, what Adrian Amos is one of my favorite players when he was on the Bears. That was tough Packers. seeing him go and balled out still. Oh, come on. It was At least if you go left. there and you're not good. Oh, man, that's Anyways. tough. Uh, <laughs> Next question. Yeah, tra trauma. Yeah. Um, let's see here. <laughs> Here's a great one. Uh, do, do we trade for another pass rusher before the deadline if we get no real pressure? That's from J JG. Yeah. I mean, you want me to take this one, Fick? Or you want yeah, to start? Ahead. No, you can go. Yeah. I think. As far as trading, I think there's a couple different factors that go into it. If the if the team is playing a, you know better than expected, say you have a winning record and it's like Justin Fields is the guy and you're like, damn, he's arrived, then it's right. like, okay, let's go win the division. Let's bring in a guy. Chris Jones still holding out. What is it going to cost? Maybe not him, but you know, like if Chase Young saying. is having Chase yeah, Young yeah. is having you know revive uh you know a great bounce back season. He's still healthy. Washington's like, eh, I don't know, and you okay, let me send, we have, we have draft capital. So me, it's all yeah, depends definitely that. where are the bears at. Are they contending for the division? Is it like up in the air or is it a complete dumpster fire? You know, yeah. that was a play factors for me. It's like, hopefully it's, it's, you know, in a spot where it's Justin Fields is the guy and you're like, let's go see if we can make some noise this year, you know? Uh, but at the same time, I don't know. Poles is not a guy to give up capital, but if there was a reason, yeah. I think that's why I think that's, that's yeah. one of them. What about you? Yeah, and I'm I no, you, you hit it spot on, but I my ideal situation is we're balling out and we still don't trade. Like just because I don't think we're <laughs> yeah, 
we're there yet. Like, even if we're like balling out, like we're not yeah. a double digit win but, team. You know what I mean? So it's, it depends. But a trade too, can also like, be like a third or fourth round pick for a serviceable well, vet. Yeah. It depends on, yeah. Doesn't it depends on what it is. But if we're looking for a big splash, I'm kind of like in the hold off camp. Like, we're just you're going to get that edge rusher next year. You're, well, you're going to get, yeah. yeah. Jared first, nice welcome contract. to the, welcome to the Chicago Bears. So, like, yeah, it's, I just don't in Paul's philosophy, at least what he's shown us so far, I don't really see that happening. You know what I mean? So yeah. if we get someone to kind of help boost the team, you know, or even some, de you know, some depth presence, like I'm cool with that, you know, give up a fourth, fifth, whatever it may be, but don't expect yep. a giant signing, even if fields is balling out because but it's maybe like, it's a second. I'd rather maybe, yeah, it's but, a bro, I, maybe he gave it up depends on who it is. Yeah. It, but I so think there's, there's history, you know, it's it, true. cause it's, it's similar because it's like after the New England game, you're like, oh, you saw something from Justin. It's like, okay, let me go yeah. get you. Let me see if I can get you a guy. And it's like, oh, the deep the defense is balling out. There's just a they need a little bit more help. The the team we're leading the division. You're like, okay, I'll send a second to go get what is it, Brian Burns from Carolina? I don't know if that would oh be no, that's different. No, no, no. If it's Burns, I'm okay with it. That man that, how much would that take? Then it won't be a just Ooh, a second. Yeah, I don't think they're gonna do a trade with us, no thing. We did, yeah, you know, yeah. Was they get a trade? Like, what, bro? That would be yeah. that would be so weird because we would send not all the picks back, but they're like getting. So maybe they are enticed to do that. Maybe like it hey, would let's get be this weird. Back. Let's recoup some of this. You know, he was and off the, the table. The likelihood, the likelihood of that happening though is very. Oh very yeah, because I don't think that's happened. But somebody of, in NFL of that caliber, you know. Yeah, maybe. no. If there's someone out there like that, that's different. You know, like a certified. You know, I, I I'm yeah. I'm for it. Age is very important because we wanted to align with like fields and where he's gonna be in his prime. So like anyone yeah. above, like if you're getting a veteran just for like some depth presence, I'm cool. But like that's why I'm like out on the Chris Jones. The man's almost 30. It doesn't it, yeah when fields is like the... truly, truly balling, he's he's gone. Like Jones is gone. So yeah. it, it's also, a short term always... win, but not a long term one. I like Chris Jones, but there's always a chance where it's like his best is behind him. You know, oh not that gosh, it's this year, me. but it's like, man, you you trade the farm, you 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 give up, you sign a big deal, and you're like, oh shit, you know, he regresses next year, and it's like, where are we? What do we do now? We just we could have had a edge rusher, you know, locked in at you know 22 year old who you know is a star or going to be. So next question, Vicky. Well, yes, we'll sir. Okay, so last few. Yeah, we got like I think two more here. So okay. Uh, so this was actually directed at you earlier. You said. Did this dude just say love is a better passer than Fields? I think you said it Shit. way earlier in the show. I mean, I remember I get where it, you're coming, and from. I know it's going to get some. So for me, it's like Fields. Clip that again. Jordan that. Love. Jordan Love has not showed anything at the NFL level, but if you're taking just from what I saw this past, this last preseason, it is just preseason, yeah. and just from what Fields like, he kind of struggles with anticipation. Like it's yeah. just. I see Jordan Love make anticip anticipation throws more than I see Justin Fields do it. And it's like I saw Justin in college and I'm shocked at what he is in the NFL. It's, 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 it's cause like, again, he was playing with three first round receivers. The anticipation still wasn't there, but it's like, he was still throwing some crazy dots, you know, everywhere. And so for me, it's like, we're going to see with the talent that he has around him now, still probably not Ohio state level. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Those guys, I mean, this, is the, this is the best Chris Olave, uh, um, um uh, JSN Jackson and yeah. Yeah. And who else? Who's the third one? I can't remember. Uh, Short guy. He's in. All right. We said Chris Olave, didn't we? Oh no. Garrett Wilson, the Jets. Garrett Wilson. Yeah. The, oh, yeah. the best one of Defensive the three. Player yeah. of the year last year. Rookie. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So for me, it's like, I love Justin, but for me, I do have to be a little picky there. It's like, I just, I want to see it first. I have all the yeah, confidence yeah. that he can be better than Justin love. I believe he can be a better passer. He's already a, as far as playmaker and then obviously running, like he's just in a huge, he already, his, his floor is already better in my opinion. Right, right, right. But as far as passing, it's like, I just haven't seen Justin consistently do it. But if you yeah. factor in last year, his receivers and perhaps the what worst receivers? first two years to start. Yeah. Oh my God. It's just a terrible way to start. Horrible. So it's like, Oh, I think we're going to really see a better passer uh, from field. We so better. It's like, we, Maybe we I should take that. Better, can, we cut, can we cut this out? Can we cut yeah, that yeah, I know, out? Right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, we got a lot, no, of, man. lot of... Like I said, I expect Justin to, to be better, but it's like, is he the better passer right now? I think that's up for debate. It, it's, it's up and it's up. It's, I'm it's all like, I'm not even sure. Yeah, it's really like who. 
because these we have one guy who hasn't been on the field that much. We have another guy who hasn't had weapons enough to evaluate. Really, we have like two incompletes. You know what I mean for grading. So it's we just not lost really the hot attack. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> They're all gone now. But no, no, it's no. all right. I get what you're saying. Okay, we have a final question here from that guy, 44 again. Thoughts on Chandler Jones being a uh, potential? No, sorry. Thoughts on Chandler Jones potentially being avail available? And today, and why that comment came up is because I think today he posted some on IG about like how the Raiders organization is trash or something like that. So he basically yeah, he went on a like, huge tire tire tire. Yeah, he basically uh, said, "Fuck that team." So, uh. I, I mean, again, this falls into the uh, the he's not as good at his position as uh, wow, I can't think of him, Chris Jones, right? But he is still good, but he's like older, you know what I mean? So I'm kind of like, again, does it match with the timeline? I would say no, in my opinion. So I don't know if it's worth it. Yeah, I'm gonna bring it up here. Um, Let's see here. Chandler Jones uh, rips Raiders brass in since deleted post. So uh, let's see here. Yeah, there um, it is right there. It. I don't want to play it. for the Raiders. It's that if that's my, my head coach or GM, I want Patrick Graham, Ivy League, um, Jones. Yeah, so I guess he deleted it, but, man, he did go off. Um, he's a second year. Yeah, he's in the second, second year, year of a three-year, $50 million um, contract that he signed. What's his age? What I think he's like 28 or something, isn't he? No, there it is. He's 30. 33. 33. Nope. Yeah. That's an easy. Nope. That is I'm trying to look at his stats here. I, I, know, I know Chandler Jones. I just don't know a lot about him. So he played 15 games last year, four and a half sacks. Um, I'm good. Hmm. I mean, I don't no, know. Chandler, I, I, Jones, yeah, I, Chandler Jones in his prime was a beast. Like, and on, I think it was the Cardinals he was on. Yeah, when he was on Arizona, Arizona, that like that's that's a Chandler uh -huh. Jones I would trade for. But I'm good on Chandler Jones. Oh my He's god. 33. 17, 13, 19. Yeah, when he was on the Cardinals, yeah. the man was a, a, a dog. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So you, you trade for Chandler Jones here, then 19, 13, 17, 11, 12. Yeah, I'm good on it. But it's like yeah. the age, so bro. I'm not his doing, last three years. I'm though, not doing a half, ten and a half, one. So it's kind of declined. Yeah. Wait, pause. No, it doesn't. Al <laughs> it doesn't align with. It doesn't align with. I mean, you're 33. You're about to be on AARP. I don't need you on my team, bro. Yeah. That's that's just. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's, that's it is what I mean, it is. Like it if, doesn't. It doesn't here's align. the thing, though. Here's the thing. Seventh, sixth rounder. You need a guy. You're kind of making a push. You know, division's tight. It's close. He's having he's a decent year. I, I think he's going for. Yeah, more. I think probably like, maybe Jones, a fifth. Going fourth. for like. No, I think he's probably gonna be a fourth as a starting. I mean, I, fourth just because his pedigree. He's only two seasons off at of double digits. So yeah, yeah, yeah. No, probably probably not worth it. I'd rather I'd rather go if we're gonna go an old guy. I'd rather go Jones, who's well, not Chandler Jones, yeah. but Chris Jones, who's the the top of Someone his said, position. Uh, AC at M uh, said no need to keep with <laughs> keep up with any of the Joneses in my opinion. Exactly. Yeah. That's I I agree. Well yeah. Said. Gucci said uh Gucci said fifth. He old. You're right. He's old as dirt. We don't we don't need that on our team right now. So mm -hmm. nothing against the guy. Probably great, fantastic. Yeah. He was a baller, but like it, the timelines just don't align. So yeah. No, well said. Um, we'll we'll, we'll finish up here uh, with predictions. Ficky, uh, do you want me to start? Well, before go we go. Yeah. Before we go, we have three predictions I saved, so I just want to share them to see this is oh, what people gave. Yeah, throughout we'll start. The show. Let's yeah, see yeah, what they were feeling. If you have a yeah, prediction, they're giving them up. Everyone watching live right now, if you have a prediction, go and throw them in here. We'll share them on the screen. Um, again, Absolutely. if you like the content, hit the thumbs up button. Please, please subscribe please. if you want to be you know be with us the rest of the year. I think it's going to be fun, especially after we, fun. Win, we win week one. You know? <laughs> after we stop the Packers, sorry. Yeah. If I just scream that into tears, but we have Sean Prince on Facebook who said 27 17 Bears. I would be. Set 27 points is okay. enough exciting plays. You know what I mean? I'm, I'd be happy with that. Uh, Terry yeah. Whitfield here with the 23 20 Bears. I'm cool with that's that. That's a little close. <laughs> yeah, that's 23 points. No, though. that would be a sneak win. I like 23 is good, especially week yeah. one. Yeah, I'll take 23. Yeah. Anything less than that, I don't want though. Uh, and then right. Gu Gucci, this would be that's ideal like 31 20. Yeah, you get me in oh. the 30s. Oh my God. We are there. <laughs> like that is, that is it. And then we got a hold from Packers to twenty. Oh, Ooh. that'd be fan, especially with our defense. Like that'd be great. Okay, so JG yeah. here with the last one, 28-14. That's also great. That's four touchdowns. That's four touchdowns. I will take four touchdowns and yep, uh, moving 14. the ball. Absolutely. So thank you for sharing those. And then now, 
for ours. Dave, what is yours? Yep. You can go first. Yeah, I'm going to go first. Um, I've been confident in this. I've thought about it. I've researched. i watched every snap in preseason, both Packers and the Bears. I'm just kidding. I watched a lot of snaps of Jordan Love, though. Too many. Yeah, yeah probably. However, yeah. <laughs> however, I don't think it's going to be um, necessarily like a shootout, but I think it's going to be a fun game. I think there's going to be a lot of offense, uh, maybe both sides. You see Watson. I think he makes a player too. But for me, I think the Bears do. They're at home. I think they're going to take care of business. I love the offense. I think they're going to finally – I think it's going to be potent. You saw that last stretch last year with Justin Fields, mm-hmm. what he did with you know, very little help, very little weapons. I think it's going to be different this year. I think it starts off strong. I'm going to go 31. Woo! Okay. Um, yep, 31, uh, 28 Bears. I think it's going to oh, be a fun one. I think it's going to be – I think it's going to be close. I think Jordan Love is better than expected. Um and I think it's going to be fun, but I think Justin Fields Man. is better too. You, you However, to have I a think heart attack the reason things. why it's so close, the reason why it's so close is because I don't think we're going to get enough pressure on Jordan yeah. Love to make him uncomfortable. And that's going to let him, that's going to allow him to kind of keep it close. Yeah. However, I don't know if we're going to have to see Jordan Love under pressure, you know, to really gauge where he's at. So I don't think it's going to happen with Chicago, but I think the bears at home, I think they win. I think 31, 28, I think it's a barn burner, but I think it's fun. And I think Justin Fields and DJ Moore, I think this offense lights it up and puts on a show and starts off the season strong. That's how I feel. I could be completely wrong. I hope not. I'd be great. 2019, you know, you know, shit the bed type, you know, game. (laughs) I hope not, bro. I'm putting it out there. I'm putting it out there right now. I I need this. I need this to happen. How are you feeling? Yeah. Man, so Can't we're actually pretty that. close. Yeah, no, I'm not going to go higher <laughs> no. than 31. That would be crazy. No, but uh, yeah. I am right there with you. So basically three touchdowns on offense and two field goals. So 27 for us, three okay. touchdowns for them and one field goal. So 24, 27, 24 is where I feel it. It's at, and I, I feel like it's going to be stressing me the fuck out in the stand. Like, I think it's going to be one of those games oh, where yeah, I'm man. almost happy it's over. Like, it's great, but like, I'm going to be like in there. Like, are you serious? I'd rather your situation. Cause maybe like we're up, we have the 31 and then they score the final touchdown to make it close. Yeah. Something like that. But I'm just talking okay. like, can we just, w- I know it might be asking a lot. Maybe it's not like they've always been good. Can we just beat them? Like easily. This is the like, time to do it. This is the time to do it. Zero. I'm just saying like, can we have a game where it's like 28, 14, like uh, one of our yeah. 25, like, 10, like, 10, something yeah. weird. Come on. Like, just can we do it where you feel comfortable throughout the whole yeah. game? Not where I'm like on my toes. Just yeah. afraid that I'm going to end up in the ER after it from just the anxiety being at an all time high. But yeah. we'll see. That's the, I'm just happy it's back. You know what I mean? The football's back. I'm glad the team is better. I'll be there. It's going to be electric there. So like I'm excited overall. Like it's going to be great. Just it'd be better if we win, obviously. So <laughs> yeah, I think we have one more comment there. You want to bring it yeah, up? I guess, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, Kenny, Kenny said 27 to 17. Oh, sorry. I did one more uh, prediction too. 27 to 17. I would like that. That's a pretty good one. Point, I would feel good about that. And then we have one here from Luke. Uh, Luke 287. So hope the D-line. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. Uh, that's going to be a key to the game right there. We kind of talked on it. But, um, again, can't wait. Um, everyone that tuned in, we appreciate it. It was such a fun show. We're excited. This is the first preview. Um, shout out to Zach. Obviously, he's a, he's on the enemy team. You know, uh, Green Bay Packers guy. But, honestly, give just a follow, a good, though. Just a good dude, man. Yeah, give Obviously, him a he a, He's fun on Twitter. Yeah, he's give fun, man. And uh, we appreciate him taking the time talking Bears versus Packers. Obviously, we hope next week, we hopefully after the game, we are able to recap and, recap something fun. Ficky's going to be at the game, so we'll probably get Hell either an yeah. episode probably the next day or two after, but we'll be there to recap it. Um, and honestly, we're, we're just excited. So if you enjoyed the content, um, if you enjoyed it, go ahead and like the like the video. Subscribe if you want to you know, tag along for the rest of the season. And then, of course, you can check me out on Twitter, Dave underscore BFR. Also, if you want to read my writings uh, uh, where I cover the Bears on sportsmockery.com, you can go ahead and check out there. Ficky on Twitter, it's Ficky Baby. IG as well. I believe it's 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 Ficky yeah, Baby. it's everywhere. We'll have, we'll have all the videos from the game. Um, oh, go ahead and I'm check them out. It, it's yeah, it's going to be a class, man. <laughs> Ficky, it's anything be before so we fun. go, man? Oh man, I, I almost feel like I have anxiety now. Like the yeah. game's not even the game is until like five days. I'm over here like kind of freaking out. But you know what? I'd rather have this feeling than being bored waiting yeah. for like some but, real NFL. And the funny thing is, Sunday we wake up and it's like, damn, we don't get a noon game. 
it's 325. So you're going to eat your breakfast, you're going to eat your lunch, and you're going to still be fucking nervous, you know? So. I know, man. You got to wait all the way till three. Oh, man. But, you know, the drinks will be in. We'll be feeling a little good to bring down. The- oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to we be gotta, a little yeah. bit more mellow. But, but no, it'll be good. And also, I'm excited that Thursday, you know, that's going to be a great game. Detroit versus Kansas City to kick the NFL off. Like, it's just good that we can watch some football again. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm just I'm just excited overall. And thank you for the wonderful Absolutely. comments. We appreciate it. Yeah, a lot of love. We appreciate you guys, everyone that tunes in the live shows. And then, of course, Apple, Spotify, our listeners over there. You guys are amazing. Love the support. And we'll catch you after uh, after this win. You know? Yeah, dub, baby. Let's go. Peace. Let's get it.